Hey there, EKDCers. Today I have the full review at last of this, the Zero Tolerance 0235. This is, of course, the sort of revision of the 0230, which um, had the sheep's foot uh, style blade and no pocket clip. Um, this was basically everything I wanted out of that. Uh, I I prefer the look of the uh, sheep's foot blade, although functionally I actually do prefer this one and the pocket clip. Um, I just really felt it needed the pocket clip this one. Uh, but without further ado, let's get on to it. You get your standard sort of new age zero tolerance box here. They've still got stuff on the side, but now it's premium performance and premium materials instead of it's a real beast and <laughs> things like that so they've toned down the cringe a little uh, this is USA made of course being a, a proud US company um, which also is reflected in the price and the price at time of filming for this because of course it always changes is $189.95 on Heine Haynes uh, you can still get the other one for uh, for slightly cheaper. The other one's one hundred seventy-eight ninety-five. So um, this is designed by the Danish designer Jens Anso. See Anso design right there, who was also responsible for designing this, the MKM Root, which I'm currently reviewing right now, or carrying for review right now. Anyway, um, you get two carbon fiber scales, two little steel inlays in the middle there, this uh, I think aluminium um, backspacer, the pocket clip there, and a 20 CV blade. And obviously each blade is serialized there. Get yourself a nice stonewash finish on there, nail neck. And this is a dual detent system with a very satisfying detent click at each point. Um, you should be able to hear. That's a very satisfying, as much for a, a detent as there is anyway. Um, a lot of people really don't like detent knives, but I'm not one of those people. I, I really do quite like these. Uh, so it's very easy to open um, you can put a thumb stud on it if you want although you really don't need to you can just sort of pinch it open a little bit and then finish it the rest of the way like that and that's honestly how I've been doing it like I've really not been two handing it um, I've just been pinching it open and opening it like that which has worked absolutely fine for me uh, washers on this I believe are phosphor bronze uh, hardware type is just the standard T8 pivot oh they were loose T6 body screws so no complaints there uh, you can see Centering is nice and perfect. No blade play whatsoever, which is great. So you get yourself a lovely, understated, deep carry pocket clip. No zero tolerance written all over that or anything, as is standard for, for ZT. Um, it just looks like that in your pocket, which is so nondescript. That's fantastic. Um, I really like really love stuff like that. I really like the real steel pocket clip as well because it just looks like a pen. This one could be anything. Um, it doesn't scream knife at all to me. It's so nice and small which is great. Um, what I will say about that pocket clip is I did find it a little bit tight in uh, a lot of trousers. Um, rather than just pulling this out like I do with most, I actually had to push this out from the bottom. Like I had to reach in my pocket and push this out and then grab it. Um, I did try to bend the pocket clip up, as you can see there's actually a tiny little gap there where I've bent it a bit, 
but I think I'll need to bend it a little bit more even. I think maybe make it longer, although I don't know, it's pretty perfect in the hand. It, it, I've really, I mean, I can, I, I can notice it, but it's not bad at all. It, it feels really good, that pocket clip, as in like, as far as pocket clips go. So I think they've got the ergos right. I think they just need to loosen it maybe. You get yourself this big old lanyard hole, which is in an odd place. Um, I didn't really like my lanyard on the, uh, the 0230 because it was just, it came out at a weird angle and it was funky. Um, I did see someone with a much smaller lanyard though that looked really cool on this, but you know, it just sort of flaps around on this model. So uh, I've left it off. Um, I do think that looks really cool though, but maybe just not super practical, I guess. Um, I much prefer having it right at the back here so it comes off instead of like up and then at an angle. Um, at least that's my preference anyway. The grip on this is just phenomenal. This is so comfortable in hand, even with that pocket clip. They've they managed to do a really good good job of integrating that pocket clip without sacrificing any of the, the ergonomics. Uh, this is completely ambidextrous. You can flip this over. As you can you can see there's a little cutout for it just there. You will have to take the knife completely apart to do that, however, because the screws are on the inside going into that way. It's a bit of a kerfuffle, it sort of goes over and then screws down that way. I think it's just one screw as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not the easiest to flip over. And the nail nick is only on one side, not that that matters. But yeah, to, to open this left hand it is completely fine. And it will it will go in the, in the pocket left hand with that clip as well. No jimping or anything weird like that. And the fit and finish on this is just I haven't found any flaws with this. I think this is this is a great production knife. It's really, really nice and neat, nice and clean. Nothing weird, nothing out of place. You can see all it all up in there. If I get my handy dandy torch in here, you can see in there it's all pristine. You got your bar there. Now you can see how the pocket clip works just there and how it goes into that side. Lovely. So let's have a look and see how the 20CV has stood up on this one. And, hmm, I did hang up a little bit. Does it have a little bit there? Nah, it seems all right to me. Yeah, so this one seems completely fine though. Uh, it's gone through everything just completely fine and it's still pretty razor sharp. So uh, it does come with a sharpening choil. However, the big drawback of this blade and of the last one is it's a double detent system and there's nothing to stop the blade going straight into you. Um, I would really like to see this with maybe maybe a bit here missing of the uh, the maybe cut out these two bits here and extend that choil a bit so you can put your finger on the blade there and stop it from careening into your fingers um, you do have this sort of extended bit up here that you can try and put your finger on but in my experience it's just too easy to knock that straight out of your, your, your grip and there's no jimping so it doesn't you know you've got nothing to grip that on so uh, if you are a person that's worried about knives just shutting on you uh, this might be one to give a miss um, however as long as you're sensible about how you use them and careful and you know treat it with the respect it deserves as a tool then you should be fine uh, you know same same with most slip joints really um, let's have a look at this versus a couple of a couple of other knives. We've got the Benchmade 940 there, and a Buck 110. So you can see it's a hell of a lot smaller than those two. 
And we also have the yet again larger UKPK and a Victorinox Pioneer. So this was actually very nice to carry. It's very inconspicuous, disappears into your pocket with a lovely deep carry pocket clip, very light. Uh, talking of the clip, you can see it's already picked up a little bit of wear, so the coating's not great. Um, apart from that and it being difficult to remove, I'm gonna have to lift this up with a pry bar a little bit more to make it easier to remove from my pocket. Uh, I think it's fine. Um, you know, it's, it feels nice, it's, it does the job. I like that they put zero tolerance up here rather than on here you know which is just annoying so you know you can see it at all times still but it's not everywhere and the only stuff on the blade otherwise is your serial number you know uh, 0235 Kai logo there you know KAI which is the sort of super company of Kershaw and Zero Tolerance and that lot and so design USA the steel and your serial number which is quite a lot of information but they kept it quite small. Um, I kind of like that. It's, yeah, you know, it's not on this side either, so that's quite nice. Grip is just this is such a knife, nice to use in hand, and the the blade shape here is. I really wasn't sure about it at first. Um, when I first got this, I thought mm, it's a bit ugly, isn't it? Uh, you know, it's a bit weird. Uh, it's, I definitely didn't like the look of this as much as the Sheep's Foot, the Warncliffe uh, style. Um, but, honestly, in use, I think this is better. Um, the upswept blade makes this just better to go through a bunch of things. It's nice and pointy, uh, sort of like the MKM Chalina. You know, it just you can easily just pierce things and cut down through them. Um, I really do like this. It's quite a nice blade stock there. You can see it's, it's got nice little finishing touches, like it's very lightly beveled at each edge, which is wonderful. And you see it's still got the horrible factory grind on there where I haven't sharpened it yet. I mean, look at that, that's nasty. They do love to, <laughs> to make that as nasty as possible, but... Um, my other big problem with this, and from what I gather from the 0230's uh, review and all the comments in that, everyone else's big problem with this is what you're getting for the price. Uh, this is a lot of money. Uh, it's £190 for two slabs of carbon fibre and yeah, 20 CV, and of course we're paying the premium because it's USA made, but so one of the biggest arguments against this price range wise would be one of these uh, which is almost exactly the same handle size it has a longer blade length as you can see it's got just as a nice like pointy blade uh, the ergos are great on it it's aluminium handles for this one you can you can splash and get the more expensive ones if you want, but you know, there's nothing wrong with this one. 98 pounds. It's 90 pounds less than this. Uh, it's essentially the same steel. M390 and 20CV are very chemically similar. Um, you know, it's just different brands really. And both perform very well. Uh, this also has a spring if you prefer the spring. Now I really like this, but buying one of these knives with £190 uh, and you get to keep the change. Uh, every day of the week I'm going with this because this just, it's the, you know, it's the same steel. Yes, it's aluminium scales, but like I said, you can upgrade if you want. You know, you can even get Makata ones for thirty pounds more. It's still cheaper. This, this is this thing's biggest problem, the Chilina, for me. Um, I do still really like this, but 
there's a lot of competition on the market right now and with things like this coming out at the prices they're coming out for and you know this is Italian steel this isn't just like knock off you know uh, you know uh, made in China made in Taiwan that kind of thing where it's you know all right you know they're they're great great factories and there's some some really nice knives come from there but they don't really have the sort of heritage that the Italian knife companies have or these US companies claim to have like you know the the build quality and the reputation and yet this is still that much cheaper uh, so I'd say if you like this maybe go for this but uh, if you do really like this this is by no means a bad buy either um, and so is a fantastic designer uh, like I said even he's worked with MKM because Here's his MKM entry, the route, which is nothing like either of these, but, you know, um, you know, you could buy this for cheaper than that as well. This is more expensive but than this, but still cheaper than this, which again is mad. So, yeah, there you go, I guess. Cheers.